What is good? We're back. Got my guy, Big D. How you doing? All right. I'm doing awesome, man. Ready to get this audit on. Got yeah. My, uh, got my glasses. Um, can't see them. They're transparent. But <laughs> it does have transparent tape in the middle. So nice Let's audit. Nice. We're ready to uh, we're going to call this like a, a roster audit. But uh, the, the title may be. 10 ways to stay away, to stay ahead of your idiot league mates. Uh, but yeah. really, I, I think this is just a good practice of uh, dynasty players. And, and, and it is a good way to stay kind of ahead of your of, of your league mates and, and the guys that are with you. And, and some of these guys may already be doing it. Um, and for some of the newer players and the older players that, you know, maybe don't do this. I, I, this is something that I always like to do. So. Um, the purpose of this show is going to be, I'm going to take one of the leagues that I have, um, and kind of just go through it. I'm not going to really use anybody names or, or have too many visuals here, but just the practice of, of how I would do it. And big D will, will, is in the same league. So he might have some input. Um, so these are all things that I do throughout the season typically, but then at the end of the season, I like to run through it one more time. So one of the first things I do is identify through the leagues, um, of kind of, who I can trade with, who trades, keeping tr some trade logs, and really just keeping an eye on who trades uh, the most and who is active uh, when I send offers back and forth. So, kind of what I'll do there is I'll you know league you know team one will be a, a non-response kind of team. Team two, uh, he he's a rigid trader. Uh, you know if you send him something, you're not going to get too many add-ons, and there's not going to be a whole lot of wiggle room. Like he's a guy who probably doesn't tear up his guys. So you know he's he's very rigid and how he has his guys ranked what he wants how he wants it I, I you know I respect it but sometimes kind of harder to deal with team three also a rigid trader so you know right off the rip we got three guys that you know aren't going to be my first options a lot of the times when I'm tr sending trades you know which is what hel is helpful when having tiers so you know those guys might have guys that I want and, you know, I know team one, I'm not going to get much of a response from and team two and three, you know, unless their values are aligned with mine, it's probably going to be hard to find some middle ground. So I'll still send them the trades, but not expecting a whole lot. Um, and then you go down to team four that, that that guy was was trophy hunting all year. You could see he was picking up, uh, you know, picking up guys along the way who were a little older. He was OK with, you know, the year before he was adding picks this year. He was giving away picks and 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 maybe trading away some of the younger guys trying to win uh, team four. He's kind of hit or miss, mostly a no response, ha has a really old team, may not exactly know what he's doing in Dynasty, might be his first year or two drafted an older team, not convinced he's going to be able to put it together. Could be a candidate for somebody who leaves the league uh, because, you know, maybe isn't a hundred percent locked in on exactly um, the values and, and who should be where and, and how, how is the rebuild going to go for him? So there could be, be some potential there, but, but, but not really. Um, the other one is, is you uh, big D you're active and I know I can count on you. Uh, the other one is big co. I know he's active. I can count on him. I like to have text messages if, if possible, but sleepers at least nice that you can send direct messages. Team seven, he's an active trader, you know, but his values can be a little wonky, usually in the ballpark. And you can usually get trade talks going. He's a guy who likes to trade. Uh, team eight, he's active, but he, you got to steer this guy. Um, you know, he's going to send you an offer uh, and you're going to send him one back and he's going to go so far in the other direction. The value is so far off. Uh, so what I mean by that is like you kind of have to steer him into the grounds of a trade because he's going to send you some wild stuff, but he'll also send you some stuff that is so bad value in your direction. So you got to keep that guy engaged. Keep knowing that, hey, I'm going to be there for you. Don't just say, hey, these are terrible offers. Your values stink. Keep that guy at arm's reach because you can get good deals with those guys. You're just going to have to laugh about them and send a screenshot to your buddy and be like, can you believe this shit? Uh, and then your buddy's going to also be get the screenshot from you like, how did you just pull this off? What an idiot he is. And it's like so that you got to keep those kind of guys uh, it, it, within arm's reach. Um, you know, Team 10, not much success with, but I've seen him deal deal and his team is kind of in shambles. Team 11, uh, mostly a wait and see kind of guy. Um, seems like more of an offer sender. Uh, he's not really going to do some volleying back and forth and he just won the championship. So with champs, you can get either a guy who's riding on his high horse. I'm not trading anything or a guy who thinks he walks on water and you might catch him slipping on some value. 
Yeah, so so kind of to break down what what you're doing, especially for the new players. Basically, he's you know, Casey just went through um, one whole league, and he's he's journaled in, in essence what the what these players are and what kind of what kind of trade candidates, what kind of players they are, what kind of what kind of record they are, and kind of put them in buckets, right? Put them in tiers, if you will. If, mm-hmm. you, if you're thinking about tiers of your wide receivers or tiers of your running backs or tears because you lost the championship he he's uh he, he's putting these uh these um candidates in 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 tears and 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 just trying to get a better understanding of the of the psychological side of it the, of the 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 person itself and how how they interact so just kind of wanted to recap what what you you were doing there casey for the right for the newer listeners or the newer to dynasty and just trying to understand what, what, what's going on. Right. And if you're not, the next thing would be kind of, if you're not, uh, if you don't have a good memory or you're not tracking the kind of trades that go down with a lot of these teams, you know, everybody's going to have their, their kind of guys that they like and their style of play. So that's also, you know, also something you want to keep, not only is it, are they an active trader? Do you have good results with them? Cause you know, right away, like there's probably almost half the league where, I know it's going to be harder to get a deal done. So I'm going to go back to my tiers. I'm going to find guys that, that are on those other six teams that I know I can have some success with getting some good back and forth with. And then I'm going to, you know, as, as we're going through the season, I seeing deals get done that aren't with me or deals that are done with me. I'm tracking, you know, are they running back guys? Are they youth guys? Are they older guys? Do they like the receivers? Is every trade they make wide receiver heavy and they're giving away a running back or do they, how much do they value the picks? Are they a pick trader? Like, do they do they want to get picks? And I'm filing all that information away to know what's going to give me the best chance to, to when I get deep into trade discussions. Because I'm not, I know some people are guys who are going to send your best offer right away. That ain't me. Uh, I'm going to send a good offer um, that, that is valid, but I, I want to volley back and forth just, just to, you know, I don't want to leave value on the table. And, you know, right. I'm not saying I have to win every 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 trade, but I want to, I want to be able to find out if I can suck uh, you know, uh, wicks off off your team in a right. trade. I want to know if I can suck. Uh, you know, McLaughlin, McLaughlin off your team yeah. in a trade uh, or, or not. You know, I don't. I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that kind of guy. I know some people might not like that, and that 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 may be some of the guys that I just, the rigid trader or the non volleyer He might not be that guy, and I I want to identify that and and kind of uh, hold on to that. Um, information and, and use it to the best of my advantage. You don't need to trade with your whole league and get frustrated. You can send those guys offers and you can send them. I usually like to send a message along with it in the sleeper. If I don't have their text message uh, thread of saying, Hey, you know, sent, sent this, uh, you know, as, does something like this interest you is usually the phrase I go with. Like, so not saying, Hey, this is the only option, but is there something in this ballpark with, a running back or a wide receiver or a quarter, you know, is there this style of trade uh, sort of available? Do you have anything that, that you do in these kind of scenarios it, when you get into leagues or at the end of a league year? Yeah. I mean, c- kind of, kind of what you're saying I, I, you know, oftentimes I'll go back and I'll do an actual audit. I'll actually go through and see what trades went through or even if they weren't mine and kind of write them down, um, put them, put them next to and get a better understanding of what players I'm playing with. Um, you know, the other side of that is, as you talked about, you know, identifying what kind of players are in your league and, and, and knowing what kind of league it is, when it's active, when it's not active, um, which is hard if you're just starting out or, or if right. it's a new league, obviously, but that's where you're taking these little tiny notes and you're just compiling and compiling and compiling. And then, you know, and then one, one of the other side of it, um, as you talked about is if I, if I know you they're they're more than likely, unless I'm really trying to get your temperature on something, I'll, I'll probably just send you a trade and, and then, you know, see what your response is and go from there. Right. But if I don't know you, you know, like blind trading to me, um, you know, you, you could do it, but, but I, I would say more often than not, you're not even, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to land any pay dirt. So I, I like to try to get, you know, to talk to the person, to get them, get them communicating, see if they're interested, knowing that other people are busy, people have lives, they may not respond to you right that exact moment. But, you know, during the off season, it, it's a long time now before we actually put points on a scoreboard again. And so, you know, take take some time, build build some relationships. So th- those are some of the um, items that I, I like to do is, is during this time, you know, during the playoffs, NFL playoffs, Probably not. This this is what I'm doing the the analytical research, if you will. I'm going back. 
I'm looking at my leads. I'm understanding my team specifically, right. <laughs> you know, I'm diving into my team and then I'm doing what you were just doing. I'm, I'm looking at other teams. I'm looking, where's this player, you know, player team going? Are they going to possibly go for it next year? Are they not? You know, what, what is the format is this, this, this particular league you're talking about is auction. So, so now we're talking about a kind of a different strategy. How, how are we going to do the auction with the rookies? What kind of dollar values do I have in my draft picks? You know, things like that. And so, um, so th- those are the pieces that I'm doing during this time of season. As we get closer to the, the, the drafts, that's when the interactions, the talking, and, mm-hmm. and a lot of times the transactions start to pick up. And that, you know, that, and all the work that you do now between now and April will, will pay off. If you do this every year and get a little bit better and a little bit better at it, you'll be surprised in a few years from now what you can, what you can pull out. Because there's some players in leagues that I, know, I go and I talk to other league mates and they're like, man, that guy never trades but he always trades with you, you know? And, mm-hmm. and part of that is just building that relationship, building that com- camaraderie. And, and I think you said it, I, I don't, I don't play to win the trade. I play to make my team better. Right. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes my values may look off to somebody, but I think I believe that it's going to make my team better. And I, I'm not going there to rip all the the minerals and resources out of the soil. Right. Like I want to be able to plant something in, on the, on this dude again. And so I'm not trying to just rip this dude off. Now, if he sends me something that rips him off, that's a whole different ball game. You're right. talking about the guy who has, you know, crazy values, you know, you laugh or you get, you know, don't get mad. That's one of, one of the other keys, but yeah. don't get mad if somebody's values are way off than yours, but you know, I'll be like, man, this is, this is ridiculous. But then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I'll take Lamar Jackson for, you know, for, for Daniel Jones, you know, I, I seen that trade go down a couple years back, you know, cause somebody was all over Daniel Jones and it's like, what in the world are you doing? Like, that's a, that's an insane super flex value trade. Right? right. Like, but, but that happens sometimes within some of your leagues. Um, um, and no, it didn't get vetoed. We don't, <laughs> we don't veto in the leagues I'm in. No. <laughs> and if no. we do, I leave the league. Right. So. Right. To kind of bring back some of the things that you were talking about there, I think you you go through here at the end of the season and you kind of see where you're at with 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 values and players. And then I like to also see, you know, I get in some mocks. Obviously, I have a advantage because I have people that but there is mocks going on. And I like to see where getting a couple different ones and see where the public value is, see where all the, the talk is and all the, you know, guys who who didn't necessarily perform or slumped off at the end of the season. Try to go. See if you're interested in those guys. Figure out which guys have have what guys. Know who has who on rosters. And then, you know, you touched on it. I'm going to go look at, at my own roster and do the audit. Where am I at? And try to be honest with myself. Where do I want to be at when the season starts? Um, you don't need to set a roster until uh, September. And my buying picks and my selling picks. Uh, you mentioned, you know, in this particular league, uh, might not be the most active you know, some of the more active guys you can you can hit up and talk about and gather information, send some feeler trades, see how they they feel about certain guys, noting when action typically picks up. If our, our draft, you know, the NFL draft haps, happens around April, our, our draft in this league wasn't until August. You saw from, you know, everybody starting to realize because this is an auction dollars rookie draft that, Hey, a few guys, it took a minute for everybody to figure it out, but Hey, a few guys have a bunch of the dollars. I don't want to necessarily compete. I'm not going to be able to compete. I'm not going to be able to get these guys. So then they started figuring out and you see one or two trades go down once, you know, you should still be trying to be in that. But once you see one or two go down, you need to get super active because that all of a sudden everybody's going, well, I, I want to trade away all my guys and get picks or I, I'm, Hey, I, I might as well get rid of my, my first and second. Cause these guys, they've got, you know, three firsts and four seconds and four thirds. And I might as well trade that. So, so take, Take inventory of where everybody has picks. And then if, if this is a league that's been going on, what kind of rookie picks they make, you know, in my home leagues, Devon Achan, you know, went one five in a, in a home league, one quarterback. And, you know, everybody was like, Hey man, what are you doing? And, and, you know, he's like, ah, oh, whatever. And then, you know, halfway in the season, he's like, oh, you guys are idiots. And it's like, no, you're still kind of an idiot. The value really was you could have, you could have traded back two picks um, and, and still got right. an eight. Nobody else was taking them. Just again, it's uh, to me, it's just all about tracking what these guys do's habits, who's available, who isn't. But again, going back to my team, I'm going to take take inventory of, of, of kind of what I have. And, and this particular league, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a year ahead of schedule. I didn't plan on competing this year. I, I this is the second this would have been the second year of the league kind of came into this with 
uh, having a lot of draft dollars in the last one and was going right back into having more draft dollars this year. And then halfway through the season, all of a sudden I was scoring a lot of points. You know, my team got hot. The six team in is total points. I was able to get in and I lost round one because I got Amari Coopered and I lost Jalen Waddle and ETN didn't perform. Uh, and McBride had a, had a bad outing. So, you know, th- things happen next week. I probably would have won. Uh, but you know, I, I ended up being able to get in there. So it ended up lowering my picks and I, I stopped chasing draft picks and was like, well, Hey, I, I, I might be able to win. I got a pretty, a pretty solid team. So overall with my team, I didn't build my team with a whole lot of running backs, uh, because I was planning to struggle for a little bit. And I don't just want an eight running backs on my team when I'm not trying to win to be aging out and getting less and less valuable. So I, I you know, I'm pretty heavy in in wide receivers. Um, I have some good tight ends as tight end premium um, and my quarterbacks are okay. So I'm not, I'm not really hurting for anything. I ended up trading for Travis Etienne and David Montgomery um, right before the season started to kind of bolster me up. And then I got Chase Brown, Spears and Sharbs kind of on my bench as running backs. I hope develop into uh, very useful players, you know, so right now I've got five. My, my goal would have been into this year was, was buying another really, really studded out running back in the draft. Uh, I don't know that there necessarily didn't is one per se that I, I feel like I, I want to go all in on. So, you know, what I'm probably going to do again is, is say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to go just buy whatever the best values are. I might buy another quarterback in the draft. I might buy another wide receiver in the draft. And then what I, what I did, uh, in this league was, Hey, my, my whole plan was, was to draft a whole bunch of younger wide receivers and, and quarterbacks and then go trade for those running backs when it was time. And I did that right before the season, uh, with Montgomery, uh, who was, was cheap enough. And, um, with Travis Etienne, I used, uh, Brandon Ayuk to go get Travis Etienne, uh, which, you know, and I, and Quentin, Quentin Johnston, which at, you know, I was a few weeks in and I was starting to heat up a little bit uh, and I traded for, for, for ET. Uh, when Johnston really wasn't doing anything, but still was a shot in the dark. And I still spent a first round, you know, pick on him. Wasn't first round money probably in the draft, but you know how that kind of, kind of goes evaluating where I want to be and, and what I want to do, what I would like to do in the off season is probably add a few more draft dollars. So, you know, which one of my younger guys is going to be the sexiest to people. So I'm going to go back to my evaluation sheet, see which guys that have, are, are into the young receivers and stylistically, which, you know, is it, is Zay flowers, somebody, somebody might want, or is, you know, I don't, JSN's probably not going to net me anything, but you know, can I get a lot for Waddle? Can I get a lot for, uh, you know, I'm probably not going to trade Olave, you know, Rashi Rice is on the team. So, can, can I can I move DK Metcalf from from having a good uh, t- to, to some auction dollars and something else to just uh, restock and, and and get somebody who I, I might like personally a little bit more. A- any any other thoughts on on that kind of stuff, Big D? No, I mean, I, th- I think you covered a lot there. Um, we we're obviously talking about auction dollars. If we were talking about straight draft picks, you know, it's 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 pretty much the same discussion. You know, um, I, I think one thing that I'll say is. When we say audit your team, um, w- what I mean by that, and I don't know if this is the same for you, Casey, but I actually want to write down my team. I, mm-hmm. well, I want to write it down on a pad or I want to I want to put it in Excel. You know, I, I basically I'm going to take it out of whatever platform I'm on. We play um, I play all my leagues in sleeper. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to sleeper, but I'm going to write down. OK, here's all the quarterbacks on my team. Here's all the running backs on my team. And I'm putting them in separate categories and mm-hmm. I'm. I'm marking people who I believe are cornerstones. I'm marking people who I believe could possibly do better next year or that are, you know, and I'm looking at contracts um, is another one. I'm looking at contracts of players on my team and saying, hey, wh- where is this player at? Especially as they get older, you know, like a, like a running back, you know, you got a Tony Pollard. I got Tony Pollard on my team. I'm going to, you know, take a hard evaluation on him and be be honest. And and just, it, you know, the, the more you can do that and get at that micro level of your team and really understand Okay, here here's where I'm at in the quarterback room. Here's my, you know, wide receiver room is my strength. You know, running back room, I I, I need a lot of help. And you could probably do that with just eyeballing it. But there's something about writing it down yeah, I agree. and and recategorizing it. You know, putting it in columns and rows or whatever. Just looking at it a little bit different. That sometimes you get these insights that you're like, man, I'm like, you know, I thought I was competing, but you know, honestly, my I'm like, you know. I'm a tight end, a, a quarterback two, <laughs> yeah. and a running back two, and a wide I'm receiver three, four three away. away. From, yeah, yeah. Like maybe I need to pivot and sell. And on the flip side, sometimes I was like, man, the, the values of how these players ended the season and what it looks like, man, I might be, you know, I might be a year ahead, like you said. I might be a year ahead of of where I am. So that that would be the the audit part of it when it comes to your own team is is taking it out of the platform that you always look at it and looking at it in a different light. Right. Um, 
and then, you know, on, on the next step of after I evaluate my team, now I'm going to go evaluate other teams and, and go back to the guys who are active. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to send trades to everybody and keep things going and keep a dialogue going. Um, but I'm going to go around to teams and I'm going to see, you know, you know, for instance, team, you know, we'll just call them team 10, uh, for this exercise here. You know, he's got a pretty ugly team. It's pretty chunky. He's got like two or three assets. He's got Jonathan Taylor and, uh, Kyle Pitts as, as basically really kind of the only marketable assets to even get anything else because he sold everything off, um, you know, come around playoff time to, uh, you know, he was noticing, Hey, I'm getting older. I, I need to do something. So, you know, now he's, he didn't have, he, he sold stuff off in the beginning and then realized he wasn't going to get there. And then he started, you know, or excuse me, he bought stuff in the beginning of the, of the year um, and then realized coming into the playoff stretch that he wasn't as good as he thought he was because he didn't do a team audit and write his things down or yeah. maybe just got unlucky. You know, some of this is just, hey, take take actual, is the champ the champ? Uh, you know, is 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 that, are these, which teams are actually good? Was that team actually good? You know, I, I think that was something that you and I talked about, you know, a little earlier, Big D. Yeah, what, what, what teams look good, what team, and th there's tools out there that'll help you. There's there's a lot of, um, in the fantasy community, there's a lot more tools than there ever have been. But but I'm still, I still like the whole concept of just kind of taking one day and writing down, especially if it's your favorite league or a league that you're really competitive in or, you know, the, or a big money league, all my, all my money leagues where it's like 150 to 200 or more, like I'm, I'm, I'm writing it down. If it's a $10 league, I might not go as in depth, but I, yeah. I don't play in a oh, lot yeah. of $10 leagues because right. cause I, <laughs> I like to win money, but I also like to play and I like it to be very competitive. And so, so most of my leagues are, you know, um, uh, a higher dollar amount. And so, I'm, I'm, I'm doing these little tips and, and tricks that we're talking about to, to get a competitive edge because these, you know, most of these players are, um, I don't know about this. I, I joined this league. Um, yeah. Casey right. mentioned at the top of the hour. So I'm not necessarily talking about this league, but, but a lot of the leagues I'm in, there's, I'm playing with a bunch of sharks. So, yeah. it's, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be able to just, uh, right. you know, escape by, I've got to find my competitive advantages where I can. And, yeah. and, but if you're a new player and you start doing this now, you know, by, by, you know, season three or season four of your, your, your primary dynasty league. I mean, you could be that powerhouse. You could be the right. one that's just absolutely mowing people over and then everybody's going, how do you do that? And, 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 you know, to, to quote the, your, your favorite Russell Wilson, you know, separate, uh, preparation separations in the preparation you know just just being prepared and, and doing these little things is, right. uh, Pepper, is, is, preparation and working on being active and, and sending you know a million offers mm -hmm. to get to get the right ones done and, and the value done so you know uh, yeah. just uh you know go, going back to kind of what i was saying w were the teams that made the playoffs actually good did they get hot did they not you know are they feeling themselves thinking they better than they are can you pull the wool over their eyes a little bit thinking that they're further along and maybe you can go steal a draft pick from them saying hey i just got third you know may maybe i don't need this draft pick maybe i do need this older uh maybe i do need this veteran player so maybe i can go steal a draft pick from him or the guy i was referencing before we got off on that little sidebar who only has JT and, and Kyle Pitts, um, you know, and he, he went back to the well and now, so he's been a draft pick collector now for, he's got two years of where he's been collecting draft picks for after being a buyer in the beginning of the season, he became a seller. So, you know, does he want to keep JT? Does he want to, you know, Kyle Pitts is still really young, but you know, somebody like JT would be interesting to me is he, you know, may, maybe I would be willing to sell one of my picks, uh, one of my higher up picks, or maybe I would be willing to sell uh, one of my, hotter young receivers to help me secure JT from him um, and, and get good value on him because he's looking at JT is, yeah, he's an asset, but how much is he going to help me? So he might, his grip might be a little looser uh, on Jonathan Taylor uh, kind of moving forward and he's a pick collector. So a pick might be a really shiny object to this guy. That's, that's what I'm kind of mm -hmm. talking about here, going through identifying where they're at, where their head's at, where they think, where, where I think they're heading. Can I, and how can I gain these little micro advantages? Um, you know, right there. And then, you know, we can go to team, uh, we'll just call it team eight. Um, and we know, Hey, this team's, this team's decent, could be heading somewhere. Um, but he's traded away all of his picks. We know that giving him one pick probably isn't going to do anything, especially cause this is an auction driven rookie league here, um, or rookie picks here. So giving him a first, he's not, that's not necessarily going to be all that attractive to him. So he's going to be in probably be in the market for, 
getting players. So when I trade him, if I if I want to give him a player to 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 bolster him up, whether it's young, new, or old, I might be able to sneak those those remaining three, four that he has from him because he's not valuing those picks at all because he's already got rid of them. He knows he's going to have pennies on the dollar in the draft and just get drug and have to sit around till the end of it spending his 30 bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, that that that's kind of, uh, you know, the general idea of what I'm driving at here. A lot of different, I think you put it best, micro little things that I think in the end as a whole can really give you a little edge and an advantage of of where everybody in the league's at and tracking all of those things and, and seeing who puts value on what and then going seeing what the state of their team is um, and where you might be able to suck value from them because they're heading in a direction or not and they're a little looser, more loose on on picks or veterans or, you know, uh, you know, if I know uh, team, let's say team seven, uh, I know from being in other leagues from him, he really likes uh, Nico Collins. So I'm probably not getting Nico Collins from him, but, you know, I might I might be able to grab Isaiah Pacheco from him. He might not be not that I'm trying to grab Pacheco. I'm just saying, like, he might be a little loose on on Pacheco and maybe right. I can go get. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco from him. I know he doesn't have a whole lot of picks either. So uh, he actually has none for 2024. So he's not going to want to get in picks in this situation because he's not going to have any money. So what younger player that I know that he likes from either being in other leagues or trading with him a lot will get his juices flowing. And, and if you don't know that, you can start sending trades that maybe you won't get done. But if he keep, if he's sending you back that same player, in the trade that he's sending back, then he probably has interest in that player. Um, so then you can start kind of identifying who those players are. And you can do this all through the off season with little things. And maybe you don't ever get a deal done, but you can, like you said, big D start relationship, start conversations and start getting an idea of, Hey, can we revisit this in, in two or three months? Are you, you still, you know, really high on, you know, Hey, you know, Atlanta got, uh, Pete Carroll. Do you, you still high on Kyle Pitts or is Kyle, you know, is Kyle Pitts leveled out for it? You know what I mean? Right. Um, so as the calendar changes, as the value changes, as, as all the public perception changes, as all the big dynasty pundits come out and, you know, as much as, you know, as much as it is silly, just like anything else, the bigger people drive value for a lot of these guys. So paying attention to what those guys or at least overall getting not, not even if you don't want to listen to them or whatever, but you can kind of go find numerically and, and who they're talking about. And those guys are probably going to be the guys who, who are a little bit more casual in these leagues are going to start putting value on. So you can see, Hey, who do you listen to? Let me start sending you the, these guys who I don't necessarily agree with this big analyst. Who's all over. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have a name for you. Who's all over tank Dell. I love tank Dell. I wouldn't want to be trading. I'm just use him as a name. Who's all over tank Dell. And you know, maybe I can get, get him to, to trade for me overvalued on tank Dell because the big pundits are on it. This is the, you only tune in a little bit. You're kind of casual, but you're playing in a you know $150 league or whatever. Um, you know, every, just because you're playing in big money meet leagues doesn't mean everybody's a shark either. Um, no, I, I think no, that's, that, that's, that, that's a good, very good point. That, yeah. that uh, a little twisted. Uh, anything else you want to add to this uh, before we wrap up? Um, I, I I would say the last thing that I would um, I would talk about is um, use the tools of the of the platform you know use the communicator tools if you don't have the text message option you know use i i like to use the trade the trade board you know put my players on the block i i like to you know i'm strategic with it like i may not put my players on the block for a while um you know if a player has a big game in season you know i might be might be adding them up there i like to go in and heart and and, and like players of other players teams for them to get an idea that i'm i'm interested in their players to get that um we talked about you know the, the one of the first things we talked about was doing a league audit and so what you were talking about casey of like hey he sent me this player you know a couple times there there may be a player that you don't realize it but the guy you you rejected a few trades earlier on the season and he was really hard after you know name a player Zay, Zay Flowers, Flowers, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's funny. Jakes, you owe me a Coke. Um, Z, you know, Zay Flowers. And so, like, you know, okay, well, you know, maybe I'm, maybe my values changed on Zay Flowers. Maybe, maybe it's time for me to, you know, see, or vice versa. Maybe he's trying, he was trying to send you Zay Flowers. And now Zay Flowers didn't end the year on a, on a, on an absolute asteroid streak. So maybe it's a time to go, you know, see what, see what the value is on, on him. So, right. so to recap, 
do a league audit, meaning that you go back through trade transactions, what people were doing, doing all that, try to classify all these players. The second piece would be to do your own audit of your team, go through your team, make sure that you know you know what your team looks like and what they actually are, where what direction you're heading. Um, and then the third piece that you talked about, Casey, is just kind of applying all these things and going going through and 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 starting those conversations, getting getting out there, putting putting out um, the ideas, using the tools and the platform, and and knowing when your league is uh, active and when they're not active, and and all those kind of things, and you just continuously keep doing that cycle. I think um, you know you're you're gonna you're gonna get one percent better uh, in in all these little things. So if you get one percent better in a, a hundred different things, you're a hundred percent better, right? So it's really hard to be a hundred percent better. Uh, you know, I'm not 100% better than Casey. Casey's not 100% better than me. But if I do all these things and I can get 1% better in all these little categories, eventually that that percentage is going to add up, and you're you know you'll be dominating leagues. So yeah, I think uh, a great recap. And you know, this isn't you know a, a normal fantasy talk where we're we're saying buy this guy, buy that guy. It's not this this one isn't so much about players. It's about your your personal league. Your yep. personal values, establishing those, establishing tiers, and esta- and and knowing the tendencies of your league mates and and what they like, who, who trades, who doesn't, where to go for those trades, being able to be like water uh, and and you know uh, flexible about who and and what you like because you know like I said, some of these guys aren't going to want to trade their guys and because they they aren't traders, so it sucks that they're stuck on that team and you can still send offers and poke around a little bit. Uh, but but just know that, that, you know, this I know I can go to these four or five guys or three guys um, and and get a conversation going and at least have some fun. Um, so yeah. just all little micro transactions, like you're saying, um, you know, I think can lead to just being better and, and, and knowing all your parts and pieces inside and out. And it, I think it gets you to be a little bit more honest with with your team of what you really know. it, You really dug into it. You, you know what the league is. Hey. Yeah, you might think you had a good team and then you really dug into like and and maybe a team who just missed the playoffs or didn't win it that year and you're and you're looking at those those winning teams and you're like, "Damn, they, they won, but they they're, they're not that good and they're a year away from being kind of shitty." But really there, you know, there's there's like three or four sleeping giants right here. If they have another good mm-hmm. draft, it's on and and hey, maybe I need to be like I am still a, a two or three pieces away, so maybe I'm not quite as ready as I need to be. So again, you know, just going through all that stuff and realizing where everybody is now by the end of the season, things can be completely different and and you really never know. That's the fun of this whole thing. Uh, right. But to me for playing in dynasty, this is part of the, 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 the almost the most fun is all the theories, yeah. the psychological stuff, the little parts and pieces, uh, building relationships with guys. And like you said, that guy never trades with anybody. Oh, well, but he, he always trades with, with you. And it's like, well, yeah, I, I work on those those things yeah. to, to, to try to get not by, not by accident, done. you know, like, right. And, 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 and I think the let sorry, the, the one other thing that I just want to say is when you're doing this and you're, you're looking at the team and you're looking at the league and this is more of a PSA from a commissioner standpoint, if you, if you're just not feeling the league anymore, right. As you're evaluating, then get out, you know, this is supposed to be fun. Like, you know, to, to get out because it's going to help the league and it's going to help you in the long run. Um, and, and, and if you noticed yourself, like, you know, I'm I'm getting out of a dynasty league every two or three years or something like that. Then maybe maybe dynasty is not something that you should do. Maybe it's keeper. You know, you want something more than redraft, but you you know maybe dynasty is too yeah. much for you. You know, and you, you want to do a keeper. Maybe you want to do a dynasty best ball or something. You know, you can play around with the formats, but you know just just make sure you're not getting burnt out. You know, I I, I hear that a lot. You know, people go from, you know, I, I had um, you know one or two leagues, and now I've got. 15 you know and now i've got 83 you know yeah. <laughs> like if some people you know that's what they want to play and, and that's cool but you know i i i know for me like i went down this last year from 15 or 16 in leagues down to like nine or eight or nine or ten or somewhere in there and it was just you know i'm trying to find that number that i can still be active and and mm-hmm. be part of the league and and be, you know, have ha, and have fun. But, but so anyways, I just wanted to say that if you're, if you're not having fun as a commissioner, I'd rather you tell me now than right before we're getting ready to draft that right. you're not going to be in the league anymore. Um, and, and for you yourself, like it, it's better to just kind of be like, man, I'm just like, 
this isn't my my thing anymore. I'm, I'm not going to do that. That, that. That's fine. You know, people yeah. change, and, things change, and, and don't be afraid to do that either. And so. that can be part of the league out is getting in that league, especially with Sleeper, because they, 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 they do have a nice function of, of you know, a, a, a group chat and separate DMs of saying, hey, the league's, the league's over. Hey, I noticed that Team 1 wasn't super active like uh, is yeah. uh, hey team one are you are you still into this do you still want to play should we and then everybody could be like hey you know i got a replacement for team one and then if team one chimes back in hey no i, w- I want to stay i want to i want to be in here just life was crazy all right i'll yeah. give you a pass one more time and then you know sometimes you might have to kick somebody out even if it's because it's just crushing the league i will say yeah. what i don't want you to do is you know you shouldn't be if you're leaving a league you should be leaving a league in okay standards and not just that you came in you're not enjoying it anymore because you were a, a dipshit and sold everything off stay around until you're back into the category where you have all your draft picks and your shit isn't depleted um at least yeah either stay around or pay forward like right if you, if you right, absolutely don't right. want to be there but you drafted a, a, an old squad you know an old squad that are all skeletons now and you traded away a bunch of your draft picks then you know, suck it up, Buttercup, and and pay forward, right. and you know, and don't don't deteriorate the league just just because you <laughs> you made a mistake or you tried a strategy that didn't work or whatever. Especially in those higher money leagues, but even in the smaller money leagues, just yeah. just pay forward a year, and, and and it's easier for the commissioners to replace a player, and it's easier for you to bow out and feel okay about it. it was like, man, I, you know, I, I didn't leave him in in a in a shitty spot. I, I'm 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 feeling pretty good. So right. You know, and I, I see that a lot on Twitter this time of year of, hey, this guy joined 55 leagues and he, he left fucking, uh, you know, his winning percentage is this. But like he left, you know, half the leagues that he shot all the shots, made all the wrong calls. And now he stinks. So he doesn't want to be in this league anymore. And he left 25 of them. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and he just don't, joined another 15. Right. You know? Don't like, don't be doing that. That's don't just, be that guy. That's pure garbage. <laughs> and that's that's what that's what ruins dynasty leagues. Um, so yeah. usually I either play with. A group of guys that I at least kind of know and have a somebody knows a friend of a friend and we can all be kind of keeping the circle together or FFPC because I know that we're not going to fold. Um, yeah. And if you're inactive, it's we're at least playing for 250. And if you're inactive, uh, obviously, there's other, you know, FFPCs, but, you know, we're at least playing for some high dollars. So if you're inactive, that's on you um, yeah. for being right. inactive. And I know that even if you trade all your picks away, FFPC will find a replacement for you and the league won't collapse. And we paid forward a year and a half. So um, anyway, good way to wrap that up. Uh, Big D very much appreciated. Thank you guys for listening. Be sure to like subscribe, comment below Um, whether you like this kind of stuff or didn't like this kind of stuff. I'm sure some people will and some people won't because we didn't get heavy into the actual dynasty players and stuff. But you know, sometimes, like I said, this is, I like this part of it. And, and I think this is just as important. Um, You know, you can't consistently come on here and say the same thing over and over again about this, but I thought it was a good time of year to say, hey, stay ahead of your league mates right here and and self scout, league scout, and and you know keep a journal if you, if it's not if you don't have a great memory or put it on Google Drive if you don't have a good, you know keep a spreadsheet whatever whatever you got to do to to just help uh, keep your mind fresh and track kind of who does what who has what and and where you're at. So um, big D, good stuff as always. Uh, we will catch you guys next time. Very much appreciated. Peace.